is good guys, it is Reed, and welcome back to an extremely, and I cannot emphasize that enough, extremely special video. This is the return of the slide off. After like a year and a half, the slide off is finally back and better than ever. So I wanna welcome you to season three of the slide off. This episode, we have a very special guest. Episode one is gonna be with the great Kevin Booth. So if you don't know, Kevin Booth is another magician here on YouTube. He's fantastic, got a great channel. He does awesome tutorials. Um, he talks a lot about different like magic theory and, and reviews videos and reacts to things. And it's a very great channel. So I'd highly recommend if you haven't already going and subscribing over there. And to top it all off, episode one is gonna be the ACAN slide off one that I have been is so excited to do for a very long time. Now, if you don't know what the slide off is and you have never seen a slide off video, there was something that I did on the channel a year or so ago where I compete with other magicians and we have a creative battle. We give each other different slights, different restrictions, different plots. We assign them to the other magician and they have to create whatever we give them using the slights that they are given. It's a, it's a great way to push ourselves creatively, to come up with some crazy routines. As you're gonna see in this episode, I had some wacky slights to try to use with an A-can, and ultimately, it's just a whole lot of fun. It gives you guys a peek and some insight into the creative process of creating magic, and of course, you get to watch two great routines, hopefully. I can assure you there'll be at least one great routine in this in this series. Kevin, man, you are in for some heat. Better have brought your A-game. Make sure after you watch this video, you head over to his channel so you can watch his performance. And guys, ultimately at the end, you'll get to vote whose routine you like better. Uh, this is obviously just a friendly competition, but a competition nonetheless. I'm so excited to bring you guys season three of the slide off. Unfortunately, season two was cut a little bit short. Uh, due to things out of my control. But season three is back and it's gonna be absolutely killer. So let's get into episode one of the slide off. This is the A-can slide off. So for this episode, we each had to create an A-can using three slides assigned by the other. So what did Kevin assign me? Kevin gave me the back palm, the freaking back palm in an A-can. <laughs> he gave me the bottom deal and he gave me the Elmsley count for an A-can. So as you can see, Kevin came out firing on season one, which I love it, I'm all about it. And to be honest, I was very excited when he first sent me these slights, especially the back palm, because I mean, as much as I was like, what the hell am I gonna do with that? Uh, it was very exciting because I knew I had to come up with something. And so I hope you like the way I've utilized it in this routine. Same thing with the Elmsley count. Um, a move that I like, I don't use a whole lot, but is definitely something that is gonna be very unique to incorporate in an A-can. And then the bottom deal, that was more like, okay, I know how I can use this. I'm gonna try to think of a little bit more of a creative way to use it. Um, and it's something I'm pretty good at, so I was excited with that. But the back palm, man, that gave me some real trouble. So I'm about to play the routine. Um, and then after that, I'll dive into a little bit more of how I came up with the routine and uh, you guys can let me know what you think. Let's jump right into the performance. Of course, after this video, make sure you go check out part two of the slide off on Kevin's channel where you can check out his routine. Let's get right into this routine, which I call a cancer. All right, guys, um, I have a problem. Unfortunately, over the past few weeks, I have been informed that I've been diagnosed with stage four A cancer. Now, if you don't know, uh, A can is a horrible effect that affects magicians everywhere. A can stands for any card at any number and is a phenomenon where a named card is found at a named number. Magicians become infected with ACAN at a, a very early uh, point in their magic journey. And eventually it can develop into a horrible disease known as a cancer. It's basically a skewed obsession with the plot. Uh, it's all you can think about and it really affects your life and your quality of living. Now, I, I thought it'd be helpful to come on here and share with you guys rather some of the uh, unfortunate symptoms that I've been dealing with and, and give you guys a bit of insight on how this affects my everyday life. You see, all I can think about is a named card. All I can think about is a named number. Everywhere I go, everywhere I see, you know, I, I go see my grandma and she asks me, how are you? And, and the first thing I respond is, name a card. Name a number from one to 52. Every trick I see, I want to be an A-can. My audiences are bored stiff because all I perform these days 
are A cans. Every A can I see, I just can't help but pick it apart. Even if it's the most practical, the most perfect A can, I just I can't help but find its flaws and go on the Magic Cafe and, and tell everyone about how terrible their A can is because because it uses a force or whatever. So worst of all, the worst symptom has to be that I just can't stop making A cans happen. No matter what I do, I can't can't stop they won't stop happening to me and I just want to show you guys a little bit uh, of what that's like a little bit uh, of a peek behind the curtain of, of someone who who can't do anything but an A-can literally no matter what I try it's always an A-can so let's go down to the card table and, and I'll show you uh, really the, this struggle that I'm dealing with I just want to share with you guys how truly horrible it is to not be able to do anything but A-can and, and no matter how hard you try A-cans just keep happening to you so um, okay, uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's do this. I'm gonna go through the cards like this. I just want you guys at home, just, just think of a card that you see, okay? Not this one, but any card that you see. Alright, now hopefully, uh, you have a card in mind. Uh, all, everyone has a different card, but that's okay. So, just remember your card, don't forget it. And, uh, okay, obviously it's important that I show you that, uh, all of these cards are different, obviously. Um, for an A-can, just so you know that these conditions are truly um, fair. Now, we need a number. Um, you can't obviously name one, so... Okay, let's use, let's use Siri, actually. Yeah, Siri... Um, yeah, Siri can help us. That'll, that'll work well. So, let's do this. Okay. Hey, Siri. Name a number from 1 to 52. Between 1 and 52 is 26. Alright, 26. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 20. Six. Now, I don't know, I mean, I do know this works because I'm telling you, like, no matter how hard I try, it always happens, but I want you, you at home, just, just think of the card that, that you had in mind and then just imagine, you know, with all your will that this card is that card. Because as, as horrible as this disease is, it can truly make miracles happen. It's the five of spades at series named 26. Now hopefully that was your card. Um, but let's, uh, let's, you know, let, let's keep going here because I'm telling you guys, no matter like what card is named, like any card, uh, no matter what number, like you could name this, you can name this, you can name this, you can name this, like any card, any number, every single time, it just happens. So obviously, uh, let, let, let's f change it a little bit this time. Um, hey Siri, name a card. Okay, it's the Eight of Hearts. The Eight of Hearts. Now obviously Siri uh, doesn't know where the Eight of Hearts is, so I just want to show you guys, just to prove and make this a little bit more like transparent, like where is the Eight of Hearts starting? So it's starting roughly like in the middle-ish, like I don't know, like somewhere, yeah, like roughly middle. Now, okay, we need a number, but I don't want to ask Siri again. Okay, let, let's try this then. Um, I want all of you at home, think of a single digit number. Okay, so any single digit number, you at home, think of a single digit number. Okay, settle on that number and okay, let's do this. I'll just dribble through the cards and we'll stop maybe, I don't know, here. I won't look, but I'll, uh, I'll take this card and just let's say multiply this this digit, I don't know where the pip is, but multiply this digit by your number. Okay, so just multiply them together. Perfect. Um, and now you should have a total. I'll give you a second if you need to use your calculator. Um, but multiply your single digit number by whatever that number was. And now you should have a total. Um, but let's, okay, let's make this even more random. So let's say uh, if your number was like uh, 32, add the digits together. So you add like three plus two, you add them together. So 
add your, your the digits in your total together now, right? So like three plus two from 32 would be like five, right? So, so just do that. Um, okay. And now uh, let's let's do a bit of addition. So again, I'll look away and I'll just deal through. And if you were here, I mean, you could say stop at any point. It really doesn't matter. Let's say you say stop here. Um, let's just uh, add add that total. Uh, hopefully, it's in frame. Add this number to your your new total now. Uh, whatever it is. So yeah. Okay. So now you're thinking of a number. So keep that number in your head. Uh, we've made it you know completely random in a bunch of different ways. So, okay, this is gonna be a problem. I was about to say, what's the number you're thinking of? Um, maybe I should have thought this through a little bit more. Uh-huh. I don't know how I'm supposed to get the number. Um, okay, let's, let's try this. Uh, imagine sending your number to me. Send it, you know, through. Try to, try to really send it to me, and I guess I'll just, I don't know. This, this, this disease is pretty, pretty impressive, so who knows, but uh, maybe I'll get some kind of feeling. I don't know. Just, just think of your number, send it to me, and, and I'll just start dealing, and we'll see what happens. Okay, just keep sending your number, see if I feel anything. Okay, something, I'm feeling something here. Um, how, many, how many cards do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. 10 cards. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this worked, but uh, I have to imagine it did. It was a number you're thinking of, is it 10? And Siri named what, I think, I think the eight of eight of hearts at ten. I mean, it doesn't always work, but luckily this time it did. That is the eight of hearts at number ten. Hopefully that is the number you're thinking of. Like I said, guys, this is just absolutely like it, it's frustrating. It's honestly frustrating. Like I can't. You know what, let's do this. I'll, I'm gonna make the conditions so impossible. We're gonna only use three cards. We're gonna use very few cards, okay? And that's gonna really help us make sure these conditions are impossible. So here we have the, the two of clubs, the six of diamonds, and the ace of diamonds, okay? So we have two of clubs, six of diamonds, ace of diamonds. Okay, so we'll use just three cards, just these three cards, um, and, and that will, uh, will hopefully help us here. Okay, these, these ones here. So uh, just to be absolutely transparent, we got the six of diamonds, two of clubs, and the ace of diamonds. Okay, we'll use just those three cards. Now, to make this truly impossible, we'll use, what was the card series said? The eight of hearts. So we know for a fact the eight of hearts isn't even here. And we'll name a number that isn't even possible with three cards. We'll name four, right? We only have three, so we'll name four. We'll name the number four, eight of hearts. Guys, I don't understand. Watch this. We go one, we go two, we go three, and four, and <laughs> a fourth card appears. Like, out of nowhere, I don't understand. And I swear, if this is the eight of hearts, <sighs> every time, guys. Like, like, watch. Look, three cards. Eight of hearts goes on top. You can see unmistakably, eight of hearts goes on top. And now again, we count one, two, three, four. Okay, we know the eight of hearts is here. It cannot be that fourth card here somehow it is every single time I don't get it guys I really don't now I know what you guys at home are thinking I know you know you're saying hey Reed you're, you're being too negative there's some positives you know but I'm telling you when it happens this often it's a horrible disease it just nothing else you can do and it really consumes you but I know what you guys are thinking hey now you can do the, the perfect A can, the Burglass effect, every single time. And you guys have to understand that I do it all the time now. It, it's just really not that impressive anymore. Um, but you know what? I know that's what you guys want to see. So fine, I'll show it to you. I'll show you guys just you know to, to make you guys happy. I'll show you, show you the Burglass effect. Fine. So you know we've already seen these cards are all different. Um, We'll use, we'll use Siri, I guess, since you guys aren't here. 
Um, but yeah, so you know what? Actually, let's let's do this. You know, the magician's not even supposed to touch the cards, so uh, we won't even use those. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll use uh, this. It doesn't matter. We use. Oh. Use it doesn't matter any deck and um, You know these have been here the whole time I haven't touched them and I'll just very carefully take them out Just so you know that I can't do any like box shifts or anything like that. You can see the box is empty and We will do that and I will not um, Manipulate these cards at all um, So again, and this is a Madison deck so you guys know uh, these cards are, are all different obviously uh, And I'll, I'll show you that uh, as we go through so um, yeah, I guess let's, uh, let's ask Siri. So, hey Siri, name a card. Okay, it's the king of clubs. Hey Siri, name a number from 1 to 52. It's 17. 17 king of clubs. Alright, no funny business. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Now, if you've been paying attention, we have not seen the King of Clubs. There's a King of Spades, Jack of Clubs, Queen of Clubs, but we have not seen the King of Clubs yet. And of course, it's not here. No, I don't see it. Like, like I said, guys, truly a powerful thing. Uh, you know, it it happens every time. You know, um, if nothing less, I hope that uh, I can give you guys a little bit of, of of happiness by witnessing this. But King of Clubs, seventeen, perfect eight can. There you go. All right, I hope you guys loved that routine. That was a super fun routine to come up with. I really like the premise, right? Having a cancer, the disease, that's something that kind of just hit me. And I really think the phases kind of build on each other really well, and it's something really neat. And obviously getting to incorporate you guys through the virtual medium is a lot of fun, and something I like to try to do in the slide off. I've done it in a couple of episodes, and I think it just really helps. And, and hopefully you were fooled by a couple of phases or one of the phases at least in there uh, that would be great but uh, ultimately i just hope you guys enjoyed the routine so i want to talk about quickly a little bit about the creative process how this routine came to be how i got my ideas and and sort of how it's developed my first idea was to do like a, a different level of a can right sort of inspired by daniel roy what he does on his channels he'll do like 10 levels of sleight of hand so i wanted to do like five levels of a can and so I thought about doing like a progressively more impressive A can where I'm talking about like, oh, this is level one, but here's why it's a problem. So then you get better and better and better and then finish with like the Burglos effect. And the idea for how I was gonna accomplish the Burglos effect uh, came to me almost first. I knew, you know, that was what I was gonna close with. What you saw, that closing Burglos phase, I knew I was gonna close with that whether I went with the, the A cancer plot or not. So then after, you know, working through, I thought about, you know, magician brain, how we're so obsessed with A can, and I was like, well, maybe I can treat it like a disease. And then I was, as I was staring at the word A can, I was like, A cancer. And then I thought, okay, that, I'm like, that's great. I have to go with that. So that made me settle on that. And then I kind of wrote the intro script, um, which I thought was a little bit funny. And then I kind of just started working through the development. I knew I wanted uh, at least one interactive phase. I ended up with kind of two. And ultimately, I think this plot worked really well. And then getting to finish with that killer Burgalos effect phase. Now, the bottom deal was very easy for me to incorporate. You know, I just didn't want to do like, oh, bottom deal the whole way. So I, I have incorporated some unique things to really hide that, hopefully. And hopefully you guys like those touches I've added there. Back palm, that was a hell of a mission trying to figure out what to do with that. I had tried things where I'd like deal the cards into a pile on the table, the named card would be in back palm, and as I'd come down, I could like flip the card out of back palm and place it as I'm picking it up. Ultimately, just could not get the angles to work on that. It's, it's way too big of a movement. So I tried different things, but ultimately I found just like, 
using it as a, as a sort of an addition and a, and a holdout method for a named card could be pretty decent. And then the Elmsley count was also super tricky because I knew I needed an excuse to use like fewer cards. I thought about, you know, you doing the type of thing where you can do like an, an infinite count. So I have like three cards here, but I can go, look, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could just somehow, so I, I tried that. Couldn't really come up with something that worked really well. So ultimately I settled on this after just kind of messing around with the Elmsley count. I figured out sort of a routining that worked and I figured out then how I could script it into the routine, right? If you come up with something obscure, right? You have something obscure like a back palm or like an Elmsley count, an eight count. Once I figured out the magic, how I could make it like actually kind of a, represent an eight can, then all it's about, and, and this is a creative piece of advice, all it's about is figuring out the proper justifications and scripting to fit it into that routine. So that's exactly what I did. I just tried to figure out, okay, why am I using a few cards? Obviously I need to, but I need a reason. Why am I doing the Elmsley count? And I needed a reason to justify all these things so that it then fit into the premise. So that's a little bit into the creative process of how I came up with this effect and I hope you guys absolutely loved it. I know you guys want to know what slights I gave Kevin. So let's get into that right now. I also, as my first slight for his A-can, gave him a palm, but I gave him the Tenkai palm, which I think is going to be a lot easier to incorporate into an A-can than the back palm, but I'm very excited to see what he does with it. I also gave him the wormhole change, which is an original slight of mine. It's a color change. This is probably the one I'm most excited to see how he does it. I have a few ideas of how he could do it, but I have no idea what he's done. Of course, guys, I have not seen his routine, so I'm gonna be watching it for the first time with you guys. And then finally, I gave him the Seamless Control by Chris Ramsey, which I think there's a lot of different ways he can go about incorporating that. So I'm curious to see what he comes up with in his first uh, attempt at the slide off and to see um, how his routine looks. So. Of course, guys, I thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see more slide offs, make sure you subscribe, like this video and comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. If you want to see more slide offs and whose routine you preferred. Again, just a friendly competition, but still a competition. So with all that said, guys, I want to thank you so much. Make sure you head over to Kevin's channel to check out his performance. And without further ado, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video.